Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deep in Science lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book, a pen and a worksheet which you can download in the link below. In your books I'd like to get down today's title which is Aerobic Respiration. And for your Star Trek activity I'd like you to sketch and label these animal and plant cells. And can you identify where respiration occurs? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. If you've got your cells sketched and labelled, let's have a look at this animal cell. Our animal cell has a nucleus which contains its genetic material. It also has a cell membrane which controls what goes into and out of the cell. It also has cytoplasm which is the site of many chemical reactions and it has mitochondria which is the site of respiration, a reaction which provides energy to the cell. The plant cell also contains a nucleus, a cell membrane, a cytoplasm and a mitochondria. But there's three more things in our plant cell which weren't in our animal cell. These are the cell wall to add rigidity, chloroplasts which are the site of photosynthesis and the vacuole which stores the cell sap. In today's lesson we are going to recap the differences between inhaled and exhaled air. We're going to recall the equation for aerobic respiration and explain why it is an exothermic reaction and we're also going to explain why animals and plants need to respire. So hopefully you remember from previous topics the equation for photosynthesis. This is where plants take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water in order to produce glucose and oxygen. Aerobic respiration is the opposite reaction. We take our glucose and our oxygen and our products of aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide and water. Now photosynthesis is classed as an endothermic reaction. In order for that reaction to occur, it needs to absorb energy from the surroundings. And this energy comes in the form of light. So if photosynthesis is a reaction that has to take in energy, and aerobic respiration is the opposite, then aerobic respiration must be a reaction that releases energy into the surroundings. And because it's an exothermic reaction, it's releasing energy into its surroundings, it enables us to maintain a body temperature of 37 and a half degrees. But where do we get the oxygen from in order to carry out aerobic respiration? Let us start by recapping what is in the air that we breathe. 78% of it is nitrogen, 21% of that is oxygen, and the other 1% is all the other gases which are in the atmosphere, including carbon dioxide, which only has a percentage of 0.04%. When we breathe out, the amount of nitrogen remains unchanged, 78%. The amount of oxygen has decreased. It's gone down from 21% to 16%. That oxygen must have gone somewhere and it's gone to the cells so they can carry out aerobic respiration. Our other gases has gone up by a percent. And have a think about what that other gas could be. And there's a hint down in the corner. What happens when you breathe on a piece of glass? What do you see? What is it that's allowing that to form? And the biggest increase we have on our pie chart now is carbon dioxide at 4%. So it's gone from 0.04% to 4%. And if you think back to our aerobic respiration equation, our oxygen plus our glucose creates carbon dioxide and water. For our first task, I would like you to complete the questions on the worksheet. If you haven't got a worksheet, don't worry about it. The questions are on screen. And you can copy those out and write your answers underneath. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. Have you answered those questions? So which gas from the atmosphere is used by the human body? That's the oxygen and we know this because the oxygen concentration has decreased. The gases which are waste products in the body, if we're looking at these pie charts, are carbon dioxide because it's increased and the other gases because that has also increased. So the evidence that water makes up some of that 2% of other gases is that when you breathe onto a piece of glass you get the condensation formed and on cold days the breath is visible when you exhale. Using the data from the chart to explain which gases are not used by the body, 
Nitrogen hasn't been used because it went in at 78% and it makes up 78% of what we breathe out. Carbon dioxide wasn't used by the body. Although there's been a change from 0.04% to 4%, it has increased, not decreased. The body hasn't used it, the body has produced it as a waste product. And our other gases, for the same reason, it has increased from 1% to 2%. The body hasn't used it, but it has produced more other gases as a waste product. So now we've explained the differences between inhaled and exhaled air. And this is important for aerobic respiration because if we're reacting glucose and oxygen, it's important we know where that glucose and oxygen came from. We can also recall the equation for aerobic respiration. Glucose plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide and water. And we've explained why it is an exothermic reaction because it releases energy into its surroundings. So now that we know that this reaction is exothermic and it releases energy to its surroundings, and we recalled in our starter that this aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria, for our next task, I would like to explain why these cells have a lot of mitochondria. And if you really want a challenge, I want to explain how respiration helps keep the core body temperature at 37.5 degrees C. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your explanations? Let's start with this sperm cell. It has a lot of mitochondria because the movement of its tail requires energy. That energy is released through the process of aerobic respiration, which occurs in the mitochondria. Our root hair cell has a lot of mitochondria because it requires a lot of energy to absorb nutrients by active transport. Where is it going to get that energy? By the process of aerobic respiration, which occurs in the mitochondria. Muscle cells also have a lot of mitochondria because they need the energy to contract. This energy is released through a process called aerobic respiration, which occurs in the mitochondria. Did you make any suggestions for the challenge? If you did, I'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. So now we've explained why animals and plants need to respire. It's so that they can have the energy to carry out their cellular functions. And now that we've defined what aerobic respiration is and what it does, I want to talk about how that oxygen and glucose gets to the animal cells in order to carry out that aerobic respiration. So I'm going to focus on the oxygen first. And when you breathe in, that oxygen enters the lung. In the lung there are smaller structures called alveoli and these alveoli have a capillary network around them to allow for gas exchange. So you take in a deep breath and the oxygen is delivered to the alveoli. There is a high concentration of oxygen in the alveoli but there's a low concentration of oxygen in the red blood cells. So oxygen is going to diffuse from an area of high concentration in the alveoli to an area of low concentration into the red blood cells. At the same time, that carbon dioxide, remember our waste product of aerobic respiration, is dissolved in the blood plasma. This means that there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood plasma, but a small concentration of carbon dioxide in the alveoli. This means that our carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from an area of high concentration in the blood plasma to an area of low concentration in the alveoli. And these two processes of oxygen diffusing into the red blood cells and carbon dioxide diffusing into the alveoli occur at the same time. This is why we call it the gas exchange. And this alveoli and this capillary are really well adapted for this gas exchange. The alveoli wall is only one cell thick. The capillary wall is only one cell thick. This is going to minimize the distance that these gases have to diffuse over, increasing the rate of diffusion. This oxygen, which has entered the red blood cells, is then going to be transported to the tissues for aerobic respiration. But where does that glucose come from? Glucose has to be consumed in the diet, either as the sugar glucose or as carbohydrate. Now the body can't use these complex carbohydrates for aerobic respiration. They have to be broken down into glucose. 
This is done when the carbohydrates are digested by our enzymes. This digestion is carried out by our enzymes. Our enzymes have a complementary active site to the shape of these carbohydrates and they will break them down into smaller soluble sugars. Sugars which will include glucose. And when these large carbohydrates are broken down into these smaller soluble sugars, then they can diffuse across the wall of the small intestine into the capillaries. And these sugars are then transported in the blood plasma to the tissues for aerobic respiration. This absorption of these small soluble sugars occurs in the small intestine where all nutrients are absorbed. So let's have a bit of a recap. We've got four questions here. I want the word equation for aerobic respiration. Where do the cells get their oxygen to carry out this aerobic respiration? Explain if respiration is an endothermic or exothermic reaction. And where do cells get the glucose to carry out this aerobic respiration? And if you still want a challenge, I'd also like you to suggest evidence to support that photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answers? The word equation for aerobic respiration is glucose plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide and water. Where do cells get the oxygen to carry out this aerobic respiration? It is breathed in from the atmosphere. This is then transported from the lungs to the tissues in the red blood cells. Is respiration endo or exothermic? It is an exothermic reaction because it releases energy to its surroundings. And where do these cells get that glucose to carry out this aerobic respiration? It is the product of carbohydrate digestion and then it is transported from the small intestine to the tissues in the blood plasma. Evidence to support that photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction. Endothermic reactions absorb energy from their surroundings. Photosynthesis requires light energy. And if you want evidence to prove that it needs that light, if you put a plant in a dark room, that plant will eventually wilt because it cannot photosynthesize. So now we have further studied the equation for aerobic respiration and we can state exactly where those two reactants come from which means we've got one more thing to do before we wrap this lesson up this man has had an accident and the paramedic claims that his sats are low this means that his red blood cells are not carrying enough oxygen using this information and what we've learned today i'd like to answer these five questions i'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time Pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Are you ready for some answers? This gentleman's sats are low. What substance are the paramedics going to give this patient? They're going to give him oxygen. He doesn't have enough oxygen in his red blood cells. They're going to give him oxygen. Don't overthink it. Suggestions as to what would happen if he didn't get this substance. He could end up with organ failure, or he could die. What process is this oxygen required for? It is required for aerobic respiration, and the equation for that is glucose plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide and water. How does this patient ensure that he has enough glucose to carry out this respiration? He's going to consume it in his diet, either in the form of sugars or more complex carbohydrates, which can be broken down into simple sugars. And that brings us to the end of aerobic respiration. I hope you've had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.